I'm really happy to be back here doing another DVD with Jiu Jitsu. Um, my focus here has been working on the Baron Bolo. Uh, this is something I've been passionate about for a long time, uh, since I was a purple and brown belt. Um, and I know I kind of hinted that I was trying to work on other things, and I have been, but my pride and joy comes in doing with the, doing the Baron Bolo and kind of being part of the Baron Bolo generation. It's something that I can always find something new off of. Um, and even just working on this DVD here, I was able to find new things that work well. And I'm excited to share it with you guys. I think it came out really good. What we're first going to be looking at is some basic solo drills to get us comfortable with going inverted. For a lot of people, like just the, just the idea of going inverted can be a little difficult to start. So these are a few drills I like to do, first of all, just when I warm up, uh, for, for training or for competition, just to kind of get the feel of going inverted and being on our shoulders. Um, so one solo drill I like to do is just, I'm going to stay seated. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not going to need anybody, I don't need a partner or anything like that, I don't need a wall yet, we'll, we'll get into that in a second. And all I'm going to be looking to do is look to roll up onto my shoulders. The big key with that, and this is what's going to help us have a good effective barambolo, is that I'm going to make sure I'm, I'm kind of crunched, leaning forward here. If, if I'm too much here, my, when I start rolling, my feet are going to start coming up and it's not going to be very effective. What we're going to get into with the barambolo is that I always want to make sure that my feet are staying glued to his hip. So to do that, I want to make sure that I'm leaning forward and I'm keeping my toes on the mat or my feet on the mat the entire time. So we'll be leaning forward. If you want, you can help yourself by bringing your arm under your legs or behind your back here. And I'm just going to look to keep my head tucked, make sure we don't stay up here so we're not landing on the top of our head. I keep my head tucked. I'm just going to start rolling onto my shoulder here. And I'm just going to look to keep my, bring my left foot to the mat. As I go inverted, I square up from here and just keep rolling through. So you see, the big key here is that I'm just going to be leading as far forward as possible. Once you get very comfortable with it, you can kind of be here, and I, for me it's easy to just roll, but if you don't feel quite as comfortable, try to think about leaning as far forward as you can first, almost like you're going to be stretching, touching your toes, and then from there, you can make it easier in rolling over. So for me, I like to keep my hands by my sides here. I feel like it's easy. If you're, if you're posting your hands, you have your hands here, maybe you're kind of almost like, um, countering yourself here. So make sure that we keep our hands close to our side or under a leg or behind your back as you roll. So we're looking to lean forward almost like you're stretching here, keeping my head down low, my arms by my side. I'm just going to come to my right shoulder, square up, and then come back. And obviously we don't want to do this slow all the time. We want to eventually start speeding it up. So when you do it, once you get comfortable, just start speeding. So we get into the habit of staying in this crunch position, which is very important with the barren bowl, always staying crunchy. So kind of getting comfortable in, in what are normally uncomfortable situations. Another drill we can do is up against the wall here. So this drill is a little bit harder for me to do slow. Um, end up looking a little uncoordinated when you do it slow, so I'm going to do it with a little bit more full speed and I'll explain exactly what I'm looking for here. So. I'm going to be just keeping my butt close up against the wall here. I'm just going to be looking to pass my feet over. And at the same time, spinning them. And we can just keep going here. And then we can come back the other way. But what I'm looking for here is to make sure that I keep my feet in contact the entire time and I'm keeping my butt close to the wall from here. And all we're looking to do is just another way of getting comfortable with going inverted there. Um, and instead having contact with something. Obviously we don't have a partner from here, but say you're ever in like a, a training, uh, training or before class or like before competition, and you need some way to warm up, but this is like a good way to kind of get things going and then be able to get into the habit of getting inverted and feeling comfortable from there. That's another option. So just make sure when we do this, it's the same thing as the solo drill, except now you can use the wall. So I kind of use my feet to help me go inverted from here. So I go inverted and then I can come back. Use the wall to push, and I can come back from here. So we have the rolls without a partner, uh, without the wall, then we have the wall, and now our third option from here, do, is my partner's gonna be standing over me here, he's gonna keep his feet slightly, slightly far apart, and all I'm gonna do is using his leg from here and getting an underhook 
with my left hand, excuse me, with my right hand. Let's just turn this way. So just from here, all I'm going to be looking to do is I'm just going to be shooting my feet in between his legs here. And this is also going to be another habit that you want to get into when we're doing the barambola, making sure that I keep my feet low to the mat and not kind of like all over the place. So from here, I get an underhook with my right hand, and I'm just going to come up onto my shoulder, just like when we were doing the solo drill before. Now I shoot both my feet in between his legs here, keeping my feet low. Obviously, if I'm up here, it's not going to be as an effective barambola, so I'm kind of creating the habit of keeping my feet low. And now I retract my right leg, and I can start coming out to my right. And now we're just going to keep the habit of going the opposite direction. So my left hand hooks around. I like to go more by my wrist here. If you can get by your forearm, that's good too. As deep uh, around the leg as you can. But I, most of the time I end up just getting my wrist and that's fine too. And now I'm just going to start going up onto my shoulder. If you try to grab by, with, your, with your hand here, it's not quite as effective. You don't have as much leverage. I feel like when I try to go inverted, you can do it. But it's much, more, it's much more powerful here to just kind of hook the leg. So as I start falling to my side, I kick my leg through. I can grab the ankle from here to help me. Come back, bring the leg out, and I sit back up. And I always try to make sure I, I get the habit of sitting back up. Um, I just feel like going all the way through here is much, more, much, better, much better for warm up, especially if this is just drills to start a class or before competition. And then after a while, you can start speeding it up. We're here. Once you get comfortable, you can start slow. And then as you go, you can start speeding up. So this is just a few things we can do to get comfortable with going inverted. You have one solo drill without using the wall, and then we can use the wall to have a good push off. And then we have a partner as well that can help us so we can start really getting comfortable going inverting and getting into the fancy stuff. So now we're just going to start looking, before we start getting into the burn bowls and spinning under and going inverted, first I really want to show the importance of the grips that we make from the Delahiva and why we want to have the grips that we're looking for here. Um, a lot of people think like, oh just going inverted, they want to get right into the stuff, but it's really important to know exactly how the position works and, and why we want to make certain grips to to get the position going to begin with. So, from the Dalai Giva, from here, there's a lot of different options we have on making grips. Uh, you can control the belt, you can control the sleeve, uh, but what I like to do, and what I like to do more now, is looking to control the collar. Um, I always feel like controlling the collar whenever I try to knock my partner down is the best option. Um, back in the day when I first started doing barambolos, I would always try to hold on to the belt and I would like live and die by holding on to the belt. And that was fine and it still works. It's very effective. But what I noticed, and I, I remember I would fight some bigger guys or I'd fight guys that had really like aggressive passing. And I felt like by holding on to the belt here, uh, it wasn't as much of a threat to them. If I was holding here and I wasn't able to get anything going, uh, I felt like it was very easy for them to start. They still have their posture, they still have their grips, they can start breaking the deli even if I'm just holding on to the belt, I'm really not controlling them that well. So I, I started noticing that my best option was to hold on to the collar here. And not only just hold on to the collar, but if you can, holding on to the collar and bringing your fingers to the inside almost trying to go to the shoulder here. So if I'm just holding on to the collar, maybe this is an easier grip for him to break and then you know we have to look to replace. But if I just walk my fingers in and I try to go to his shoulder from here, if he tries to break that grip, maybe he still can, but maybe at the same time it's gonna be more difficult for him. So I keep that in mind, not just holding on to the collar, but making a deep grip from here. And also you see by holding on to the collar and breaking his posture. And even though he still has his hands free, just breaking his posture is not going to be very strong in breaking the Delahiva from here. Whereas if I hold on to the belt from the beginning, which like I said is an option, you can do that, but it's still, uh, it, I don't feel like it's our best option. So if I'm here, look, it's easy for him to push and break the Delahiva, but if I hold on to the collar and I'm really breaking his posture, posture and I'm trying to bring my elbow towards my hip and keeping him low, even if he is pushing on my legs, it's not going to be as strong. And if I keep my feet strong, 
then it's going to be hard for him to break it, the bell heba and the foot on the hip. The second part is when I'm when I'm going for the barrel the the barrel bolo from here, I'm always making sure that I'm keeping a strong deli heba hook, and even more importantly, that I'm keeping this foot on the hip. A lot of guys have a tendency to keep the foot a little too low from here on the thigh, and just like the hand on the belt, it's it's not the worst thing. You know, you can still get away with it. But it's going to be much easier for him to start stepping over the leg and start closing the gap from here and then starting like the knee cut. For me, I always just feel comfortable with holding on the collar and really keeping his foot pressed on the hip from here. So see, I'm almost kind of bringing his hips back. And from here, I feel really comfortable that it's going to be hard for him to step over and start looking to close the gap. So I really want to make sure that I keep this foot firmly planted on his hip. It's going to be harder to knock him down as well if I have my foot above his, above his hip here and kind of resting on his thigh. It's not a bad position for you, but to knock him down and start getting into our Marambolo attacks, it's going to be difficult uh, to really get anything going from there. So I'm always looking to try to keep this foot posted on the hip. One, it kind of makes it uncomfortable for him to start looking for passes. And two, obviously it'll be easier to knock him down from there. The deli heel hook from here, I always want to make sure, the thing I always try to tell people is not to have a floppy foot. So we always got to make sure that I keep my foot flexed all the time, keeping this hook in tight, trying to have my toes as high up on the front of his leg as possible, and turning the knee in slightly. What a guy who's going to be dealing with Deli Hiva is always going to be looking to do is he's going to be looking to push, break, and have this knee turn to the outside. So it's always a battle of who has the inside and who has the outside control. Do I have the tight control here, or is he able to turn his knee to the outside here? So, whenever I first initially get this, I'm always going to make sure that I'm keeping a tight hook, my knee is slightly turned in, forcing his knee to turn in, and it's just going to make it even more difficult. Like I said, there's always going to be resistance. The guy might be able to break, but we just need to know that what we need is to get back here and to have this control whenever we start looking for the attack. Lastly, in the deli heba, I like to grab onto the pants, but not when I'm going to start looking for the barambola itself. I feel like it's a little bit too loose of a grip right here. So we have two options that you can have. Either one, you can hold on to the ankle from here, which is a good control. Or two, we can hug the leg right here, which even takes me a little bit more towards his side. It maybe it can make it easier for me to knock him down. But either way it works. The big, the big key here is that I'm controlling his leg. I feel like if I control his pants, I'm not really controlling his leg. I'm controlling his grip, so it's not going to be quite as effective from here. So when we're going for the barrel bowl and we're knocking him to our left, if I'm going to my left with my left leg here, I want to make sure that I'm holding on to the ankle, either here or here. I feel like holding here is just going to be a little too loose. So we have all of our options from here. I'm making sure I'm breaking his posture. My foot is going to be glued to the hip. I have a tight deli heba hook, always making sure I'm keeping it strong and trying to turn his knee in. And we're holding onto the ankle itself and not the pants. So what we're going to start looking at is how to knock down our partner. Um, the biggest issue I had when I first started doing the Baron Bowls when I was like a purple belt and early brown belt was just getting the guy down to his butt or getting him down to his hip. It wasn't necessarily the inversion part for me. I was luckily blessed with the, with the ability of feeling comfortable doing that, maybe just being young and limber. Um, but the issue for me was trying to just knock him down. And the ways that I was doing it maybe weren't super effective, but I've been able to you know, figure it out through training and through just drilling and, and seeing what works. And we have a few options, and the first one is just going to be a push-pull option from here. So. So just from here, starting from the Del Hiva, having the same controls that we have, I like to control the collar, breaking the posture, keeping the foot glued to the hip, keeping the Del Hiva hook, and controlling the ankle from here. I'm not going to change anything, we're not going to change any grips when we're going into this, but all I'm looking to do is just set him up, kind of move him around. If you try to, if you try to just knock someone down by just kind of like pulling on the collar and trying to bring their butt to the mat, which is, which is what I try to do a lot in the beginning, just try to use strength to knock them down. They're not going to go anywhere. And especially with someone who knows the Barambolo or who knows how to deal with being in the Deli Hiva position, what we need to do is kind of have like a, a, a push-pull reaction. You need to push them one way for them to come back another and to get what you want. So maybe not necessarily it's going to be always exactly like this, where we just go one and then back as I'll show. 
but the idea is just that we want to make sure we move our partner around. We can't just keep them in one spot. If I just go straight from him square on his feet to him on his butt, that's going to be very difficult. So we got to like shift their weight around. So all I'm looking to do from here is I'm just going to kick him forward. I'm going to sit up slightly. We don't need to go into the sit up guard, but just I'm going to just sit up just slightly to bring him back. And what he's going to do as soon as his weight is starting to fall back, he's going to want to bring his weight back forward. So I'm just going to kick him forward, and his reaction is going to be to try to drive his weight back and step back. And that's good for me. As soon as he does that, I'm going to start pulling in with the collar, pulling in with the deli heba hook, and loading his weight up onto my legs here. And now once I can, I don't even have to pick him up, but if I can slightly, that's good too. I can pick him up slightly, and now I'm just going to kick him out to my left. And knock him to his side from here. And then soon we can start looking to invert, either with the collar or with the belt, but we'll get into that. The big key there is just being able to knock him down to his side and being able to start looking to go inverted. Um, so again, making sure we have our controls and we're not gonna change any of our grips here. So I have the collar, I have the pants, or I have the ankle, excuse me, I have the deli heba hook, and I have the foot on the hip. Remember, what I, what I said is I just wanna be able to try to move him around. I don't want him to just stay in one place, it's gonna make it much harder for me just to knock him down. So I wanna make sure I shift his weight, get him to move around, and then I can start bringing him to the mat. So I just kick, I slightly sit up, and now he's not gonna like this. He's not gonna be liking to, to come onto, go onto his heel, so he's gonna start driving his weight back forward. It's good for me. I can pull his weight up onto me, and now I kick to my left. And you see when I do this, I'm also keeping my feet connected to him here. I'm not gonna just be keeping my feet away and, and uh, not in good contact. Always making sure I'm keeping my feet in contact, and now I'm in prime position to start looking to start spinning underneath and starting to look for my ground ball attacks. Our next option to try to knock our partner down to his butt um, and starting to look to go into the barambolo is uh, when our partner is actually going to be stepping over and starting to force like a knee cut position and start forcing any type of pass. Um, for me, this is my favorite one. So there's two ways of doing this. One, they can either step over your leg and start looking for the knee cut, or you can actually just force it yourself. So sometimes when I, if, if I like this one, I'm going to try to force it myself. But either way, I feel like this could be very effective. So another way to get him to move around is for him to actually start initiating the pass. So Diego's going to start stepping over, and he's going to start trying to close the gap. And obviously, we don't want to sit here for too long. The more I sit here when he steps over the leg, if I just sit here and kind of wait, you know, two, three, four seconds, five seconds, <laughs> whatever, um, the more he gets comfortable here, the harder it's going to be for me to kick him over. So it has to be like a moment, as soon as he steps over, we're already starting to look to kick him over from here. So he steps over, and I'm just going to use that foot behind him here on his butt, and I'm going to start kicking him forward. And ideally, I want to get his hands to the mat, but more importantly, I just want to bring his weight forward. And a lot of time, he brings his hands to the mat, and since he's not going to like this, he's going to want to try to come back to his feet. And as soon as he does that, watch how I kind of rotate with him. And now, I bring my deli heel block back in, I bring my foot to the hip, and now I can just drag him to the mat from here. So I'm able to just create an angle as he comes back. So I knock him to his hands, he starts coming back to his feet, and as he does that, I start shifting to my left. I start rotating to my left, and I can start using that grip on the collar to pull him down. So as his weight's coming back, he's falling back to his heels, I can use that momentum to bring him to the mat. So again, from here he's got the Deliva, and another option from here is you can force it yourself. If it's not going anywhere, if you're having a harder time with other options, if he's, if, he's, if, he's, if he's kind of not budging, if you're pushing and pulling him, we can easily set up the reaction ourselves. We can just hook behind, kick forward, and as he comes back, we can do the same thing. So it doesn't really matter whether he's going to be pushing down on the leg, or whether you're hooking it yourself, it's still the same motion. You can either start it yourself, or you can get it, or he can do it himself. So either way, we can still do the same exact thing: pushing down the leg, kicking over, and then knocking him down as he comes back.
So if you haven't locked, liked any of the other options so far on how to knock them down, here's, a, here's another option that we have to try to knock them down and start going into the brand bowl. From here, let's say we don't like we don't like kicking them forward. We feel like you're still getting caught in a knee cut position when you're bringing them forward. Sometimes can happen, there's always the risk of that. If you're having a hard time doing the push and pull, we can still try to bring them to the mat, but try to use my foot on the mat instead. So what I like to do is I like to kind of kick him out slightly, widen his base, and all I'm going to be looking to do is I post my foot on the mat, and I'm going to use that foot to try to scoop myself up around him as much as possible. So I'm not just going to stay square with him here. I'm going to post my foot, and I'm going to start shifting my weight. And the more I go off to his left, the easier it's going to be for me to utilize this grip on the collar to knock him down. If you want, you can keep this deli heel hook and strong here, or you can shoot the foot more across the hip. Either way is really fine. If you want to kind of get a head start on keeping the foot to the hip, that works too. But for me, I like to keep this hook strong, and once I knock them down, then I'll start focusing on controlling the far hip. But like I said, either way will work well. So from here, once I get him into this position, I, can, I have the right angle. He doesn't really have much to stop me from knocking him down. And now all I'm going to do from here is I can just use the grip, use the foot on the mat to knock him down. And now from here, I come back with this foot to the hip, and now we're going to be in the position to start looking to control the belt, start looking to spin under, and start to look to take the back. Here we are again, one more time. Starting from the Deliva. I have my grips. Say we're not able to kick them over. Say we're having a difficult time moving them around. What I can do is I can just slightly change my foot position. Where we don't have to stay on the hip, we can go just above the knee here. I'm just going to widen his base out a little bit. And now I can just start posting my foot on the mat, and I use that foot on the mat to start rotating around to my left and trying to go as far to his back before I knock him down as possible. So I post and rotate. I'm almost kind of doing like a, I'm just kind of doing a short hop from here. And now once I'm here, I really utilize this grip on the collar. And like I said, either you can shoot the foot across early on, or you can keep the deli heel hook here. But either way. We're in a good position. I start pulling him down, bring his butt to the mat, and now I guess I'm going to bring my feet up to his hip, and I can start going into the inversion from here. Now we have one more option to go into the barren bowl and try to knock them down. So from here, starting straight from the belly Eva. Say you don't like to push your foot on the mat, say we don't want to kick them over, say it's hard to push and pull. We do have the option where we can still utilize this foot on the hip and I can start using it to lift my hips up. So we're almost going to be doing like a bridge with the foot on the hips. So from here, I have my grips. I'm just going to widen his base out just a little bit. And now I'm going to use that foot on the hip from here to use it as a bridge here. So I post, bridge, and I'm going to start coming up onto my left shoulder. And I'm going to shoot my leg as far across as possible. And now once I feel like my foot is on his thigh here, I can bring my weight back down. And when I do that, I come back with my right foot, and I hook behind his leg here. And now once I'm here, we have the option of bringing him forward, but if I'm holding on to the collar, it's much easier for me to knock him to his butt from here. So I can either just pull on the collar here, or what I like to do is I'm just going to slide my foot down to his ankle. And I'm just going to kick my left foot out to my left, and my right foot to my right. And from here, I bring him to the mat, I bring my feet back to the hips, and now I can start looking to go inverted and start looking for the brown balls and going to all your attacks from there. So again, I got deli heba strong, I got the grip on the collar, foot on the hip, deli heba hook, uh, holding onto the ankle. I'm just going to start kicking, just widening his base slightly from here. The closer his feet are together, most of the time the more comfortable he is. So the little bit wider this base is, the better it is for me. I post my foot on the hip. And I'm going to start bridging up onto my left shoulder and to help me shoot my leg all the way across. For guys who may be really long, maybe that's not going to be really necessary. If you have really long legs, sometimes you can just bring your legs through without even needing to come up onto your shoulder. But for most people, we're going to have to come up onto our shoulder from here. 
and I'm still maintaining these same grips. So as soon as I bring that left leg across, my right hook is just going to follow. And now I just slide the foot down and start leaning towards my left and using the grip on the collar to pull him down. And now from here, I can start bringing my feet to the hips and we can start going right from here. And we'll be good to go. Now let's start taking a look at one of the basic Barambolo options. So we've knocked them down, and now let's look to go inverted and start looking to take them back. So from here, we've gone over our options of bringing him to the mat. One option, obviously, that I, that I said I liked best was when he steps over, I kick him forward, I rotate, and I bring him to the mat from here. Now guys, from here, we're going to have two different options. Either one works well, so we'll do both as we go along. From here, either you can continue to hold on to the collar, or once we drop to our shoulder here, we can start reaching for the belt. Either way you want to do. Just as long as we maintain and control the entire time. Obviously, we don't have a grip, it's, it's not going to work. So from here, what the big key detail is, is with either grip that you make, let's say we start off with the collar here, that I make sure that I'm not just doing this where I'm spinning and my head is far away from his hip. I want to make sure that I use this grip to pull my head towards his hip and so it's easier for me to shoot my feet all the way across to his far hip here. I've drilled Diego for a long time and he can attest that I've pretty much bruised my head on his hip doing this. So you don't want to do that. But we do want to make sure that we are having our head making contact with the hip here. So as I make this grip on the collar, I'm just going to start pulling in. I'm not just going to hold it here and spin. I'm going to pull and I start bringing my head close to his hip. And you see it's easier for me to keep these hooks on his hip from here. So I'm not going to have my feet here with floppy feet. I'm not going to be too far away. I'm literally going to be hooked onto his leg. So if he ever tried scooting away and moving away, I can almost follow him with these hooks. And now from here, with my left hand, the hand that was originally controlling the ankle when I knocked him down, I'm going to start reaching for his far leg. So from here, when I do that, I don't want to reach for his ankle here. This, I feel like I don't have as much control. I see there's a lot of options where people do do this, but for me, I feel much more comfortable reaching more for the hip. And even reaching almost for like the grip by more by the belt loop. I feel like I have more control of him overall than I do if I control the ankle here or control the pants. So when we start looking to bring him up, to have him sit up, I want to make sure that I control more by the belt loop, more by his hip from here. And now all I look to do, I'm going to rotate slightly to my right, I'm going to face towards him, and I'm going to start bringing my feet to the mat and pulling him in towards me. And at the same time I sit up. The one thing with the basic Barambolo is that we're not always going to end up straight on the back. There's other options that we're going to go over where I feel like we end up more directly on his back. So when we're here, we have to be able to climb. So whatever grips you make, as long as we start climbing up on his back, I like to reach for the belt with my left hand. And my right hand, I always like to reach for the back of the collar. If I can, I'm going to make a grip on the back. Come, just turn a little Make a grip on the back of the collar here, especially if we're a little low on the back here. I never want to try to establish a position of being here. This is where we end up losing the back. So I always want to make sure I pull myself up towards him. And now I can get the second hook. I can get the seat belt from here. And we're good to go. And one more time. From the Dele Hiva. Let's say he steps over. I kick him over, bringing his weight forward. He comes back. I knock him down. I'm already having my feet to the hips. And let's say this time now I'm holding on to the belt. So like I said, either way of you, as long as we have a grip, that's what's most important. Now from here, make sure that we really utilize this grip, that we're not wasting this grip just as like a hold, but we're actually pulling ourselves in with that grip. So from here, I have my grip on the belt. I'm not just gonna spin here. See how far away my head is from his hip? I don't want this here. I wanna make sure that when I have this grip and I start spinning underneath, that I'm really bringing my head to his hip. 
and I'm tight so I'm here. And now once I'm here, I switch my grip up high onto his pants. I don't like to reach too low. There will be options where we can have to grab onto the pants low, but whenever I'm going for the basic barambolo, I'm always looking to reach more for his hip. And now from here, I'm starting to look to lean to my right, and I'm looking to bring my feet to the mat. And at the same time, using both these grips by his hip, one on the belt and one on the pants, to pull him in towards me. And now, a lot of times, like I said with the basic barambolo, we're not always ending up like directly on the back. So I always want to make sure I start climbing up from here. I can keep this grip, I can pull him down, and now I can start reaching for the back of his collar. And watch how I kind of just jump forward. And I make sure I, my chest lines along with his, shoulder, with his shoulders here. Now I can start getting my second hook. I can start getting my seatbelt. And then we're good to go from here. So another option we have from the basic barambolo is looking to go into the leg drag. And this is when we have a hard time getting underneath the hips. So I always find this to be a good option because a lot of guys are always trying to scramble back, not give up the back, so they'll try to bring their back to the mat. So we always have the option to come up into the leg drag, which I feel like obviously is a, is a good um, secondary option as well. So same thing, he steps over. I have my setup to knock him down. From here, we can have either grip that you want. Either you can hold on to the collar, you can hold on to the belt. I spill underneath. But let's say, for example, that I'm just having a hard time bringing him over and I'm having a hard time looking for the back. Or let's say that I want to get on top and I want to start passing. It's, it's up to you, really, what you want. What I can do from here, is I'm going to reach across for the hip, just like we were before. And now, whenever I start looking for the leg drag, I like to try to create a little space. So, one, before I start bringing my left knee behind, which is what I'm going to be doing to get the leg drag, my right shin is going to go behind his knee. So I pump my left leg up slightly to create a little bit of space, and I'm going to slide my right shin behind his knee. And now from here, now that I have the space, it's easy for me to circle this opposite leg. And at the same time, I'm going to use this grip on the pants. I'm going to start pulling him in towards me. And I can start turning in towards him here. So again, from here, I'm going to make sure that I circle my leg to the inside, behind his leg. And as I do that, I'm going to start turning more onto my right shoulder and start facing him. And now from here, we can start climbing and looking to come up on top. So from here, we have a few options. But for me, what I like to do is I like to reach for his belt, clamp down on his hip, and watch how I kick his leg to create the space. And now I start coming up, reach for the collar, knee to the mat, and I can start driving my weight forward. And now I'm gonna be in the leg down position. From here, we have whatever setup you guys like. Well, let's say he steps over, I kick, he comes back, I knock him down from here. Say I continue to hold onto the collar, I use my grip to spin underneath, I keep my head close to his hip, reach for the far leg, I like to reach more for his hip, and now I'm just going to start pulling my legs in. So one, with my left leg, I'm just going to kind of kick my leg upwards just a little bit just to create some space. And I can bring my right shin behind. And I kind of almost clamp down with my left leg from here. Just so in this transition, it's not going to be easy for him to just kick his leg out from here. I kind of have a little bit of control from here. Obviously, we're not going to be able to sit here for too long, but we do have enough time. But just this control will be pretty good and keeping him locked down, at least momentarily. And now from here, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to swim my left leg to the inside. And as I do that, once I bring my leg in, I'm going to start facing him. And you see at the same time, my right foot starts posting on the mat. So I start coming up onto my toes. From here, now I start controlling the hip. 
What a lot of people have a tendency to do is as soon as they start coming up on top, they start trying to reach right away. And I feel like I'm almost overextending a little too much from here. Maybe I can lose control. Maybe I just don't have any control from here. And in that time, he can start scooting away. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a grip on the hip right here. But not even on the hip, I can make a grip on the belt. If his belt's not there, we can grab onto the pants. That works too. But either way, I like to control the hip first. I extend my leg and I start working my way up on top. And now from here, I can reach, reach for the collar, drive my left knee to the mat, let's just turn a little bit. I have to bring my left knee to the mat, always on the side that I'm leg dragging towards, keeping my head low, controlling his back, keeping my knees turned in, keeping a pinch position from here, and we're gonna be good to go with the lift. Okay guys, so now we look at our first option uh, to go into the twist and hook from the parabola. So we're going to save the time here of knocking Diego down. If you guys want to see the other options, we can go back and see the options because Diego did squats last night and I think he's looking pretty burned out right now. So we won't have to knock him down anymore, we'll just go straight into it. So pretty much the same thing going from a double guard pull situation. We're already on our side, we're, even if you're in double guard pull, we're, like seated, we're in a seated position, but it's pretty much going to be ending up here anyway. So when we're in this deli heel hook position, we're just going to do the same thing. Remember, utilizing the grips that we have, making sure that I'm not just holding onto the belt, spinning, but not really going underneath. See how, hard, how far away my head is, but at the same time, how far away my feet are. And it's going to be so much easier for Diego to just scoot away from me. I want to make sure that I really pull in with the grip that I have, whether like it's on the collar or whether it's on the belt from here. Where I swim, and I pull my head tight to his hip from here. And now what I'm going to start doing is looking to go into the twister hook. So I start reaching for the far leg high up of the leg. I like to reach more by the hamstring or by the hip. And just like the leg drag we were doing before, we were create, creating the space, I'm going to do the same thing here, where I'm going to bring my shin behind the knee. So I pump my leg upward a little bit, bringing my foot from his hip. And I bring the shin behind. And now what I'm going to do from here is I'm just going to create the space. Either one, you can use your shin behind his, his ankle, or two, we can just push. Now obviously we don't have a lot of control from here when we're just pushing. So this has to be a fairly quick motion. If, you, if we sit here for a long period of time, it's probably going to be most likely he's going to kick his leg out some way. So we have our control here. This is a good spot right here to keep a control if we're going to sit here for a second or so. But we don't want to sit here for too long. I'm going to make sure that I start moving. I post, and now watch how I rotate my hip. I'm going to try to face towards him. Uh, so I'm, just going to, I'm not just going to swing my leg. If I try to swing my leg in, the angle isn't going to be good, and it's going to be hard for me to get that twister hook. So watch what I'm going to do from here. I not only am I swinging my leg, but I start rotating towards him. And I can get that twister hook from here. And now what I like to do is I like to lock on a figure four, and I can even curl his foot in towards me. And I can just lock up here. And now from here, we're in a really good position to start taking the back. Whenever I start looking to go for the back from here, I can let go of the figure four, or you can continue to hold it either way you feel most comfortable. But I like to let go from here, keep my hook tight right here. I'm going to keep a flexed foot so I can use my left leg as like a pendulum right here. And it, sometimes it might take one, two, three tries, but from here I eventually want to kick down and I can make a grip with my left hand anywhere. You can control the skirt, you control the hip until I expose his back. Now the nice thing I like about this is when we do the twister hook right, like we did here, I'm going to end up straight up on his back. Whereas when we did the regular barambola without the twister hook, sometimes we have to reach a little bit for it towards the end. So now from here, I'm already squared up with his back. Like I said before, if you have to, you can always pull him up a little bit. 
But from here, we can just get the seat belt and we can get the second hook. So again, starting from the double guard pull, I'm control I have my grip here, I'm gonna really utilize my grip for when I spin underneath, so I make sure my head is close to his hip. We're actually in contact with his hip, and I'm just gonna reach for the far leg. And now when I create the space, I pump my left leg, shin behind, and now the motion of when I post my foot on his ankle is going to be quick. And a one, two, and I turn towards him. And my hips are, our hips are almost kind of meeting right here. Remember, if I stay too much away, if my hip doesn't turn in enough, I don't really have the angle to get a perfect shin behind the knee. So I want to make sure I really rotate to get that twister hook from here. And now if you want to lock down and kind of hold this position, you can get a lock on a figure four, kind of curl his leg in. It's really hard for him to extend his leg. I want to make sure that I don't have a floppy hook right here and that I'm not going to be keeping it strong. If I do this, it'd be easy for him to extend his leg and kick out. So I always want to make sure that I keep my toes in front of his leg right here and I have a really strong hook. And now from here, whether you like to lock your legs here or whether you like to keep them apart, it doesn't really matter. Just as long as we have enough momentum, a little pendulum right here to kick, start exposing the back, I get the seatbelt, and I can get my second hook, and we're good to go from here. Our next option from here is going to be looking for the twist hook again like we did before, but now kind of dealing when we're, when we're looking for the leg drag, dealing with resistance and going into a twist hook. So from here, say we've gone inverted, we've got our grips, and now from here I'm starting to look to go into the leg drag. So let's say we are initially looking to go into the leg drag, but our opponent knows that we're going to start going for that. So I switch my grip, I pump the leg. I bring my shin behind, and now I'm going to start looking to go for the leg drag. But let's say, for example, he's heavier or he just re is resisting well. I start going for the leg drag here, but he's starting to kick back towards me. He's starting to resist. He's bringing me, my back to the mat. Whenever I go for the leg drag, I'm always trying to turn in towards him here. But let's say he's not making it easier for me, regardless of maybe he's bigger, or like I said, maybe he's just good at defending and kind of stiffening out his legs. All I'm going to do from here is when I do this, as he starts kicking me back, I slide my shin, my left shin, more up to the back of his ankle from here or his calf, and now I'm going to bring my right leg back in. And I can get the twister hook from here. And same thing as we did before. I'm always going to make sure I keep a flex foot from here so it's not going to be easy for him just to kick his leg out. Or we can lock on the figure four right here, lock down his foot, and stay tight from here. Now I can just use this as a pendulum here. I start kicking forward, got my hook, and I got my seatbelt again. And again, so from here, when I start getting this position here, I'm going to be looking for the leg drag, but he's going to be pushing back. He's going to be resisting, so sometimes it's not easy for me to come up on top. I'm having a hard time from here. If he keeps my back to the mat, no problem. I can just slide my foot down to his ankle. And I'm just going to start bringing the leg in. So if I keep it here, it's hard for me to get the twist hook because I'm almost like, you know, I'm almost blocking myself. So I extend his leg. I rotate like we did before to get the twister hook. And now from here, I've got that hook in tight. Remember, not keeping a floppy hook so that he can kick his leg out. Always making sure I stay tight. And if you want a little bit of reassurance, we can always lock and pull the leg in here as well. And now just like before, whether you keep it locked, we can start kicking him down or you can use this leg as like a pendulum. And from here, I expose his back, seat belt, and second hook.
So let's get into an option from here where it's hard for us to hold the twister hook and instead we can start going into a leg clamp position. So we're doing our same thing. We're going inverted from here. And for me, my first option that I like to try to get is to try to get the twister hook. I always feel comfortable from there. Being a smaller guy, I feel like having the twister hook gives me more leverage to be able to take that back than any other option. So for me, that's, that's what I'm always looking for first. So we're doing the same thing. We're going into the twister hook from here. But let's say, for example, like I'm dealing with someone who's got really heavy legs or is just really good at getting out of the twister hook or is just really resilient with it. Um, a lot of the guys I train with at Marcelo actually make it very difficult. A lot of the guys have heavy legs, like Dylan and Mateus and obviously Bernardo. So sometimes holding on to their legs here is a little bit difficult and they'll start extending from here and they'll start kicking out. And it's, it's, sometimes it's just hard for me to curl this leg back in and get this twister hook. So we don't want to be sitting here too long fighting for one thing. If it's not working, you know, like, and we're just like struggling from here and they're just kind of like, and they're just not having it. We have to find another, another option. So this will be the one time from here where I switch my left hand. I'm going to switch down to his pant leg here. And now I'm just going to open my legs up slightly. I'm just going to shoot my legs across and I'm going to clamp both of his legs here. So let's, let's just go back a little bit. You break the, break the twister hook. And I kind of pull in with this grip from here and I clamp onto the legs. And I'm going to make sure that I go above his thighs from here. Locking on like a figure four or at least crossing my feet from here either way. And now when I do that, I'm going to roll all the way back, coming up to my knees. And now we have a good amount of options on what we can do from here. One option that we have is to look to just go into the mount, or if we want, we can go into more of a folding pass. But let's just take the mount from here. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to start looking to go to the head and arm, and I can just walk my way up to the mount. If I keep my legs clamped tight, it's going to be very hard for him to go anywhere. So once I get that upper body control, it should be pretty easy to get them out from there. So again, I've got inverted. I'm ready to go for the twister hook from here. I start reaching across. I start creating the space. But Diego's really strong. He's really resilient. He kicks out. I slide my hand down to the ankle from here. And now I'm just going to look to start clamping. So I pull his leg in towards me slightly, but I'm mostly going towards him. I open up and I shoot my legs across. And I'm always making sure, see how I'm going above his knees. If I'm below his knees, it's easier for him to kind of start wiggling away from here. If I'm here, I feel like one, I'm going to be too far away. And secondly, it's just not going to be enough control. So I want to make sure I'm above his knees from here and staying tight. And now automatically, I'm not going to let go of this position. I'm going to start reaching for the back of his collar or just wrapping around here. Reaching for his shoulder, anywhere I can grab that can help me start pulling myself in towards him and start working my way up towards the mouth. And then whenever I'm here, I'm always making sure I'm keeping my knees pinched. I want to keep my toes close together from here and my lace is flat on the mat so everything's tight. It's going to be hard for him to start looking for hip escapes and starting to replace his guard. Now we're going to look to go back into that leg clamp position, but now we can start going back to the back. So, we can always find the back, it's always there. So from here, same thing, say we look for the twist hook as our first option, but Diego does a good job of extending his leg and not letting it get in. And like I said, sometimes the guy can be really strong not letting us curl the leg. Sometimes you can curl the leg and go back to it, but let's just say we can't and we can find another option. So I slide my hand down to his ankle from here. I bring up his leg a little bit slightly and I shoot across. And now from here, I'm gonna to try to keep my toes on the mat. I'm not just gonna come up and sit on my laces. From here, I have my toes on the mat and now I'm just gonna roll back forward. And I bring my feet to the mat from here. And now kind of like when we did the basic barambolo where we end up a little bit too low, obviously I can't take his back from here, I don't have the hooks, I, haven't, I don't have an established position. Of course, I have them in a bad spot, but we're not where we need to be yet. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start climbing. I reach for his hip, or I can reach for his belt, 
either way, but as long as I'm making a grip that's leading up towards his back. So left hand I like to go to the hip, right hand I'm going to go to the back of the collar, I can let go of my figure four, and I just pull myself up, my chest meeting his shoulders here. And now I can get the second hook and the seat belt, and we're good to go from here. I bring the leg up slightly, and I shoot my legs through, and instead of coming up all the way up on top from here, I can just stay right here, and I'm just going to come right back. I'm going to use my feet on the mat to help create some momentum until I'm all the way in the seated position from here. So make sure we're not staying on our back here, because then it's going to be a little bit more difficult for me to start like getting his back, because of course his, gonna be his, his back is going to be on the mat more. By coming up, see how he's more on his shoulder from here and it'll be easier for me to start reaching for his back. So I go for the hip one, two for the back of the collar, and then I start pulling myself up, and I'm back to the back. One option that we have uh, from the twist hook isn't even to look to take the back. Everyone always thinks about taking the back, taking the back. But what a lot of people tend to miss is that there's actually just a, a leg lock submission that we have right from there looking for the calf slicer. So let's take a look at that. So from here, we're doing the same thing. Always making sure I'm staying tight to him here, keeping my feet glued to the hips, bringing my head close to the hip. Always making sure we're doing that. Regardless of what move we do, that's, these are always our basic controls that we need to Keep in mind though. So from here, I get to the twist hook the same way I clamp down, I have my control. I get to the twist hook and I even like to kick the leg down from here. But let's say for example, we're not losing the twist hook but we're also having a hard time taking the back. Maybe it's another situation where the guy is heavy from here and it's hard to, it's hard to move him. Uh, one option that we have from here is just looking for the calf slicer. And there's a few details that I want you guys to keep an eye out for when you do this where I don't like to cross my feet right here. I don't feel like this is quite as strong. Whenever I go for the calf slicer from here, when I start pulling in his leg with my left hand, my outside arm, I'm gonna make sure that I just post my foot on the inside of my leg right here. So I post, and I grab onto his ankle here, or even better, onto his toes, and I can start pulling in towards me. I also wanna make sure that I be careful if I do anything with my right arm. If you wanna bring the right arm in, that's fine. But make sure that your elbow isn't on the inside. So maybe if I start pulling with both hands, maybe he can start grabbing onto my arm here. And who knows, maybe he can finish an arm lock from here. Obviously, it's, it's, it's rare, but it's something that you have to keep an eye out for. So if you do use your second arm and you take it out from underneath his leg, make sure you keep your elbow on the inside right here. So I post. I'm grabbing from here. I kick out. I just kind of start bringing my feet to the mat. I use this foot to push my foot, which is going into the back of his leg from here, and I can just pull with both hands, or the one originally, and we can get the finish. So again, from here, we're getting into a twister hook. I'm kicking him forward, but say I'm having a hard time lifting up his hips and looking to expose the back. So what I can do from here, is you can start off with your feet crossed, but from here, I don't like to stay here. I don't feel like this is quite as strong. A lot of times, maybe we can get the finish, but I think it's more effective. If I start, if I keep this hook tight, and I'm pushing on his foot here, which actually in turn may expose the back more. So there's another option for you. But from here, if I just look to push, I can, I feel like I can put more pressure on the back of his knee. Now from here, I can just grab onto his ankle, or I can reach more by the toes and start pulling in. And if you want to use your second arm, that's fine, but just make sure we keep that elbow to the inside and I'm not bringing my arm out so he can attack it. So keep the elbow to the inside, reaching for his ankle here, the foot's gonna post. So as you're pulling your hands in towards you, 
you're, t- you're kicking your knee out, or you're kicking your shin out, which is putting pressure on the back of his knee, and we can get the towel. So another option that we have um, going into the twist hook is a little bit more of a no-gi variation where we're not relying so much on grips, we're actually relying more on like our arm control and like controlling the hip more than just holding onto a collar or holding onto the belt. So we'll start from the seated position here. And obviously like it still works in the gi as well, um, but it can be utilized in no-gi. So let's say from here, you know, we're holding onto a belt, we're holding onto the collar from here. What I'm going to start looking to do to get to get better control is to reach all the way across for his far hip. So now I'm really forced to be tight. If you thought that we were that we were tight going here, now I'm going to reach all the way across for his far hip. So I'm going to start with whatever grip we have, but I'm going to let go as I start spinning underneath. And I reach for the hip. And now from here what I'm going to start doing is I'm just going to bring my feet to the mat. But I want to do at the same time I want to make sure that my leg is my legs are pinched over his knee here and tight on his thigh. So when I do this, just come back for a second, dude. When I go, I pin my feet to the mat. I'm staying tight on his thigh from here, and with that, my hip is going to be underneath his hip, and that's going to make it easy for me to start getting the twister hook. If I'm out on the side here. It's going to be very difficult for me to get that hook, or if I do, it's going to be a little bit of a struggle. But more being under his hip here, tight high up on his leg, I'm not really low, so I have really good control near his hip. All I have to do is I'm just going to swim my legs to the inside, getting that twister hook from here, and now just same thing as before, kicking him down, and I can take the back from here. We're pretty much doing the same thing, as always, but instead of relying on the grips, we can reach across for the back. So I'm here, I have my control. Like I said, you can start off with the control. You don't have to, but I always like to have a grip here or on the belt, either way. So I'm here, but I want to get even tighter. So I reach all the way around his back and I'm going to start bringing my head close to his hip. I'm going to start bringing my feet to the mat. And as I bring my feet to the mat, I'm getting underneath his hip and I'm pinching my knees together over his knee here. Like I said, if I'm below his knee, I don't really have as good a control as I, as I want. But now from here, I'm in a really good spot. So I can swim, I can get the twister hook without even much effort. This doesn't take any flexibility at all to get this from here, because his leg is already so close to the mat. If I'm more up on my shoulders from here, then, it, then it's more to bring the leg in. But since he's so close to the mat, since his leg is so close to the mat from here, it's easy for me just to circle that foot in. And now I can pull down, expose the back, get the second hook and get the seatbelt from here. Now we're gonna look at a basic version of the Barambolo, um, something that something that I did a lot when I was a blue belt, something before I would even start going for the Barambolo. So this is a nice transition into getting into the versions uh, without having to really go inverted. So from here, I have the Delahiva, and we have all of our options to try to go to the back. But from here, this is where we're gonna be the one where we start looking for the deep X, where I start posting, I, I widen his base a little bit. And now I'm going to use my foot on his hip. I'm going to start bridging, coming up onto my shoulder, and bringing my left hook to the opposite leg from here and going as far across as possible. And now with that, I have good leverage to start working my way towards his back. And I like to hang on to this grip here um, for as long as possible to continue to break his posture. Too often, a lot of guys will let go of this grip 
as they go to the back, and maybe he starts moving away. He gets his posture back, he starts creating space, maybe I lose the position. So from here, as I start going to the back, I'm going to continue to hang on to this grip from here, and then I reach. Boom. So I'm already like halfway towards his back once I make this grip. And now I'm just going to use this right foot on the mat to help me get all the way to the back from here. My left hand switches to his ankle here, to the opposite ankle. And now I'm just going to swim my right foot in. And now we can start squaring up. From here you have a few options. Either one, you can go both hands on the belt or both hands on the back of the pants. Uh, if you feel more comfortable with that, if you really feel like you need to pull them in. But for me, I kind of like just holding onto the ankle here and kind of keeping this control as well. I still feel like this one hand on the back of the pants is still, or on the back of the belt is still going to be just as effective and kind of controlling them here makes it harder for him to start maybe trying to run away or trying to turn back in towards me. Now all I'm going to do is first I'm just going to start pulling his butt in towards me. I don't want to start kicking him out first because then maybe he can start running away. So I pull him in, dropping his weight, and now I kick out the legs from here. And I always want to make sure that I keep my feet flexed when I'm here. So see how I'm turning my feet to the outside. If I'm just keeping floppy hooks here, there could be, in the transition of me getting the seatbelt, there could be a time when he starts running around, maybe I could lose the position. So of course we're not staying here for very long, but I want to make sure I keep this tight so as I'm getting my hooks in, he's not going to be able to just easily run away. So first comes the seatbelt, and then whatever side I'm falling towards, so say I like falling towards my right side, my right hook comes in first, and then I can follow with my left. And we're good to go from here. From here we have our Delahiva, he's standing over us, I got a grip on the collar, grip on the pants. Now from here, what I'm going to start looking to do is I widen his base out just a little bit, and I'm just going to start posting back on his hip, and I'm going to come up onto my shoulder here. And shooting my leg as far across as possible. And now we can just drop our weight back. And that will even turn his knee in slightly, so it's going to be really hard for him to start facing us. As I start rotating to his back, you can help. You can use your foot to help uh, go out to the back, and I just start walking towards his back. Once I can see him from behind, I'm going to start reaching for his pants or reaching for his belt. I'm going to switch my feet here, and I can get my second hook in, holding onto the ankle, holding onto the back of the pants, or holding onto the belt. If you want, you can hold on both hands onto the back of the belt, but either way, we're still in good control from here. I make sure I pull the hip in first, and then I kick him out. Make sure I keep my feet flexed so he's not just going to be running away from me right away. Obviously, I'm not going to sit here like this for very long. I get the seat belt right away, keeping my hooks tight, and then I can switch. If I fall to my right, I get my right hook in first. If we ever start falling to one side and get the opposite hook in first, then he can start bringing his hip to the mat. And we don't want this, and now we start losing the back. So always make sure. Whatever side we're falling towards, we're getting that hook in first. Always the top hook is always the easier hook to get. Sometimes they might resist, they might struggle a little bit here, but it's always much easier than trying to get the hook up for the hip that's on the mat. Get the second hook here and we're good to go.